Again, we see just another reference of like prophesying with music. Uh, Psalm 49.3 says, My mouth shall speak of wisdom, and the meditation of my heart shall be of understanding. I will incline mine ear to a parable. I will open my dark saying upon the harp. And the dark sayings, where else have we seen dark sayings? Well, we've seen a reference in the New Testament and also with uh, Proverbs, right? Book of Proverbs, Proverbs, a book of wisdom and truth. And, that, and, and the, the whole point is for people to understand the dark sayings, the, 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 more, the things that are a little bit more mysterious, maybe harder to understand. God will open up that key and that wisdom and that knowledge. And one of the ways that he's doing that here is he's saying, I'm, hey, I'm going to open up the dark sayings with a harp and help you understand through the music, through the teaching, coming through the song. And it's another tool that's used to help us to understand and learn and grow. Again, this is all foundational. All of this is going to be extremely important when we transition, and I preach later on how we apply this to today's music. Don't forget these things. Let them sink down because we need to use these principles and what we're seeing here when we determine later on what is right and what is wrong. We're seeing the right examples. We're seeing what the Bible teaches about music, okay? And we'll apply it later on. I had you turn to Ezekiel 28, because this is another fundamental truth or foundational truth to understand what, one of the reasons why this is so important. We know that Satan is, you know, he's, you know the name for Satan is, is he's the, our adversary, right? Satan is continually working against the Lord, against God, but very subtly. What is it, you know, going all the way back to Genesis, we see the serpent in the Garden of Eden. And the Bible says that the serpent is more subtle than any of the creatures, right? So Satan's tactics are always ones that are, that are subtlety to try to deceive people. And in order to be subtle, you can't just change just everything overtly and have it be completely different from what the truth is. If you, want, if you want to deceive someone with a lie, you've got to have it really close to the truth in order to deceive the most amount of people. Now, the extremely gullible people may fall for anything you say, but you know, people who are thinking, you need to have your lies line up really close so it's hard to spot the difference between the truth and the lie. This is where Satan excels. This is the tactic he uses just like when he questioned God's word, he didn't come right out and just say, hey, God didn't say that. Right? First he says, well, did God say that? The huge difference in that approach and how that impacts your mind when you're, when you're approaching it. If he said, well, God didn't say that, you'd, you'd be like, well, no, yes, he did. Right? But if he said, well, I mean, did God really say I'm not saying he didn't, but did, did he really say that? Now... There's a, there's a different level of, I, I don't know, you know, it starts to make you question and wonder as opposed to taking more of a defensive stance. And this is the way that Satan works, right? It's obvious. We can see his tactics. The reason why I'm bringing all this up is because Satan is involved in trying to deceive people through music. Music is powerful. Music is important. People learn through music. Satan has his hand in music just as much as he tries to get his hand in the Word of God and corrupt and pervert and change and change the truth of God into a lie. He's done that with the modern Bible versions. He's done that with questioning the Word of God. He's doing it also with music. 